Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. Nehmedullahi ta'ala ve nasafir aşhedü en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Neşhedü enne seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu. Sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve azvacihi ve sahibi tabi khulafe ve rahşidin mahadirinin ba'di. Ve zimmeti ala tahkik, hususa minhum ala lamiti khulafe ve rasilina ala tahkik. Umar al-Mu'minin, Hazreti Ebu Bakı Umar Osman ve Ali ve ala bakı sahabe tabi'in. Ridvan ta'ala ihim ecma'in, ya yuhal mu'minul hazirun. İttakumullah ta'ala inna Allah hamel ladhin atkawal ladhin ahum muhsinun. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrafil anbiya mursalin. Seyyidina Mevlana Muhammedin ve la alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in. All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the universes, who says in the Holy Quran, in Surat Al-Buruj, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Indeed, those who believe and have done righteous deeds will have gardens beneath which rivers, gardens flow. That is a great success. Truly, the assault of your Lord is severe. Indeed, it is he who originates creation and repeats. And he is Al-Ghafur, Al-Wadud, the most forgiving, the loving, Lord of the throne of glory, doer of whatsoever he wills. Sadaqallah al-Azim. May all peace and blessings be upon our Master Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the beloved of Allah. Holy Prophet said, Send many salawats upon me on Friday. Because when a person sends salawat upon me on Juma, they are presented to me immediately. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Nabil Ummi wa la alihi wa sahbi wa salim. May peace and blessings be upon him and upon his noble family and upon his blessed companions. Especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Siddiq al Akbar, Farooq al Azam, Zul Nurain, and Shahi Merdan, and all those who follow them until the last day. May peace and blessings be upon the inheritors of Rasulullah, the Naqshbandi Grand Sheikhs. May peace and blessings be upon the Ottoman Sultans, the heroes of Islam. May Allah love those who love them. May Allah curse those who hate them. May Allah return their rights to them soon. Amen. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun, no believers. All praises are due to Allah who gave us life to complete Ramazan and who let us reach to this day of Fitr. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful that He gave us two Eids in one day, Eid al-Fitri and the Eid of Juma. He is the most generous, most merciful, most forgiving, greatest Allah. We are thankful that we are His servants and He is our Lord. And that Allah is delighted and pleased with His servants who are coming to Him in a state of tawbah and purity on this day of Eid al-Fitr. Understand that every moment of Eid, from His days of fasting to His evenings of Taraweeh, to His nights of Tahajjud, they were created by Allah as an excuse to forgive us and purify us. Holy Prophet is telling us that on this day, Allah notices us and makes an announcement to us. When He sees the believers at the Eid Gah, He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My servants, for my sake you have kept the fast, and for my sake you have performed the prayers. Now take your leave, knowing that you have been granted forgiveness. Our Lord is Al Wadud, the most loving. If it were not for His love for creation, we would not exist. And He loves us and He becomes happy when we return to Him. In a very, very beautiful hadith expressing the degree of happiness Allah feels when a servant comes back in tawbah. Holy Prophet said, Allah is more delighted at the tawbah of His servant than one of you who lost his riding animal on a journey in a barren land while it carries his food and drink. The man loses all hope 
as he comes to a tree to lie down in his shade, despairing over his animal. But suddenly he finds it standing over him. He takes hold of its reins and then he greatly rejoices, saying, O oh Allah, you are my servant and I am your Lord. He makes some mistakes in his words due to his great joy. Ya Rabbi, we're returning to you in Tawbah. Accept our Tawbah and be pleased with us. We finished Ramazan, Alhamdulillah. We feel that our faith is strong in our hearts. Ramazan came and gave us treasures. How we will keep those treasures safe throughout the year so that they are not stolen by Shaitan and his allies? What will we hold on to? Holy Prophet said to us, some asked the Sahabis, which handle of Islam is the most firm? They said, Namaz. His, he alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, it is good, but that is not it. They said, Zakat. He alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, it is good, but that is not it. They said, fasting the month of Ramazan. He alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, it is good, but that is not it. He said, they said, Hajj. He alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, it is good, but that is not it. They said, Jihad. He alayhi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, it is good, but that is not it. Verily, the most trustworthy handle of faith is to love and to hate for the sake of Allah. Who do we love? Who is in our hearts? Ramazan came to help us sweep our hearts clean from all the false idols and false loves that were in our hearts. So who is there left in our hearts? Who should we love? Rasulullah said, love Allah for the blessings by which he nourishes you. Love me for the love of Allah. And love the people of my house for the love of me. And Imam al-Ghazali, Qadrasullah Sir is reporting that one of the awliya on his deathbed made this dua, Ya Allah, you know that if I disobeyed you, I still love those who obeyed you. Make that as a means of nearness to you. Oh believers, who did we put in our hearts? Who's living there? Who do we remember in our hearts? Who do you care about? Whose face do you see in your heart? Whose naqsh is in your heart? For us, the people of Tasawuf, Alhamdulillah, the answer is simple. It must be our Shaykh. We love our Shaykh, who is from the Ahlul Bayt, for the love of the Holy Prophet, Like Hazrat Dawood, we ask for the love of those that love Allah. And we know that the awliya are those that love Allah, and Allah loves them. And like that Eulia's last dua, we know that we are dirty, weak, sinful creatures, but we are running to love those that love Allah and whom Allah loves, his obedient ones who have reached the rank of Abdullah. That is our safety. Our Grand Sheikh Sultan Al-Awliya Shaykh Mulana Muhammad Nazim Adillah Haqqani, God is saying, Grand Sheikh Abdullah used to say, to be in the presence of loved ones is a great good fortune. This is a divine feast. And all those present have been invited from pre-eternity when the souls were gathered in the divine presence to pledge their eternal worship and loyalty to their Lord. At that time, those who were destined to meet in love in this dunya were gathered near to one another and it is for this reason that their hearts are drawn together in this world my work and the work of all those who are on my level is to make you believe this is the task of the sheikhs it is not possible to believe in something without believing in someone because in order to listen the heart must be open whoever listens believes in someone and believes that this person can teach him what he cannot know, see, reach, or be by himself. Such belief brings you the love of the one to whom you are listening. By believing, you learn how to love. By believing, you learn 
how to obey. By loving, you are on the way to obedience. Because true obedience is not possible without love. Whoever is forced to obey will never obey. And true obedience leads to the divine presence. The love of the believers, of the awliyas, of the prophets comes from the love of Allah. At first, Allah loves them. Then His servants love Him. When does this love come to us? When we begin to obey. You will not become aware of love before beginning to obey. When you dig, you will find water. That is what obedience is. It is the digging of the heart. And Sultan al speaks the truth. We are making endless shukur to Allah that we are in this Osman al Naqshbandi path that teaches us the way of love through obedience and through associations with the awliya. The peer of our tariqat, Khwaja Shah Naqshbandi, is saying the foundation of our spiritual path is sohbat. Solitude from other people involves the desire for fame. And disaster resides in fame. Goodness is in the Jamaat, in Jamaat, in Sohbat. We need to strengthen this Sohbat. We need to strengthen this Jamaat. In this Eid day, if we are fighting with anyone or cutting ourselves off from anyone, we need to end that. Of course, this does not apply to those that are attacking or doing evil to other believers non-stop. But for believers who are in the same jamaat, following the same shaykh, we must be forgiving each other. Oh believers, today is the day of making peace between each other. Rasulullah said, it is not lawful for a Muslim to boycott another Muslim for longer than three nights. Verily, they are both running away from the truth as long as they are divided. The first of them to fix things will have his sin forgiven because he is the first one trying to fix it. If he gives salams to his brother that he wasn't talking to, and if the other person rejects the salam, then the angels will give the person salams. And shaitan will respond to the person who did not accept the salams. If they both die while they are divided, they will never enter paradise together. The awliya are telling us to walk in the path of Rasulullah And the path of Rasulullah is for us to love each other. Our master Sahib Sayyid Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibrisiya Rabbani is saying, when we learn how to love each other, then we will be able to reach to Allah. Holy Prophet is teaching that anyone who says, La ilaha illallah, and they believe, they are entering into paradise. That means that one has a faith. He says, however, he says, but if you don't love each other, if you don't learn how to love each other, even if you are saying that word, la ilaha illallah, you are not really reaching to the main roots of the faith. So we need to learn each other here. We need to love the ones Holy Prophet loves. We need we have to love the ones our shaykh loves. And our shaykh is running to help other people. We have to love them and we have to do the work to reach to them and to be of service to them. That time, the life we are living in this world is a reflection of what we are hoping to see on Judgment Day. Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu is saying that once Holy Prophet said, some of Allah's blessed servants are neither prophets nor martyrs but they are special people who on the day of reckoning, the prophets and the martyrs will envy them for their ranks and nearness to their Lord. Someone asked, Ya Rasulullah, who are they? And what kind of deeds do they perform so that we may love them as well? Rasulullah said, they are a people who love one another in Allah even though they have no blood relations, money to exchange, or worldly business to trade with, I swear by Allah on the reckoning, their faces will be beaming lights, and they will be raised on pulpits of light. 
They will not be subject to fear when the creation is seized by the awesomeness of the day of resurrection, nor will they be subjected with sorrow when the rest of creation will be seized by it. He then recited the ayat, Surely the friends of Allah are not subject to fear, nor shall they grieve. The Prophet of Allah speaks the truth. May Allah raise us in the sahbat of those great ones on the Judgment Day. We are disobedient, but may our love for them save us. May Allah not leave us in loneliness in Ahirat. O oh, believers, Eid Mubarak to you. May we enjoy this day. May we make it joyous for our children with the hope that Allah has forgiven us. May we be under the shade of the dua of the Holy Prophet who prayed to his Allah saying, Ya Allah, make faith beloved to us and beautify it in our hearts and make unbelief, wickedness and disobedience hateful to us and make us among the rightly guided. Ya Allah, let us pass away as Muslims, live as Muslims and let us be joined with the righteous. Amen. Amin. Amin. Estağfurullah.